Daily Reading Through the Bible, Week 3, Day 5, January 19th, 2023. Genesis chapters 38 through 40, Mark chapter 15. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible, netbible.com, copyright 1996-2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC, all rights reserved. Genesis 38. At that time Judah left his brothers and stayed with an Adulamite man named Hira. There Judah saw the daughter of a Canaanite man named Shua. Judah acquired her as a wife and slept with her. She became pregnant and had a son. Judah named him Er. She became pregnant again and had another son, whom she named Onan. Then she had yet another son, whom she named Shelah. She gave birth to him in Kezib. Judah acquired a wife for Ur, his firstborn. Her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord killed him. Then Judah said to Onan, Sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her so that you may raise up a descendant for your brother. But Onan knew that the child would not be considered his. So whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he wasted his emission on the ground, so as not to give his brother a descendant. What he did was evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord killed him too. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Live as a widow in your father's house until Shelah, my son, grows up. For he thought, I don't want him to die like his brothers. So Tamar went and lived in her father's house. After some time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. After Judah was consoled, he left for Timnah to visit his sheep shearers, along with his friend Hira, the Adulamite. Tamar was told, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she removed her widow's clothes and covered herself with a veil. She wrapped herself and sat at the entrance to Inniam, which is on the way to Timnah. She did this because she saw that she had not been given to Shelah as a wife, even though he had now grown up. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute because she had covered her face. He turned aside to her along the road and said, Come, please, I want to sleep with you. He did not realize it was his daughter-in-law. She asked, What will you give me so that you may sleep with me? He replied, I'll send you a young goat from the flock. She asked, Will you give me a pledge until you send it? He said, What pledge should I give you? She replied, Your seal, your cord and the staff that's in your hand. So he gave them to her and slept with her, and she became pregnant by him. She left immediately, removed her veil, and put on her widow's clothes. Then Judah and his friend Hira the Adulamite take a young goat to get back from the woman the items he had given in pledge, but Hira could not find her. He asked the men who were there. Where is the cult prostitute, who is at Enniam by the road? But they replied, There has been no cult prostitute here. So he returned to Judah and said, I couldn't find her. Moreover, the men of the place said, There has been no cult prostitute here. Judah said, Let her keep the things for herself. Otherwise, we will appear to be dishonest. I did indeed send this young goat, but you couldn't find her. After three months, Judah was told, Your daughter-in-law, Tamar, has turned to prostitution, and as a result, she has become pregnant. Judah said, Bring her out, and let her be burned. While they were bringing her out, she sent word to her father-in-law, I am pregnant by the man to whom these belong. Then she said, Identify the one to whom the seal, cord, and staff belong. Judah recognized them and said, she is more upright than I am, because I wouldn't give her to Shelah, my son. 
he was not physically intimate with her again. When it was time for her to give birth, there were twins in her womb. While she was giving birth, one child put his hand out, and the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. But then he drew back his hand, and his brother came out before him. She said, How you have broken out of the womb. So he was named Perez. Afterward, his brother came out, the one who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and he was named Zira. Genesis 39 Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt. An Egyptian named Potiphar, an official of Pharaoh and the captain of the guard, purchased him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. The Lord was with Joseph. He was successful and lived in the household of his Egyptian master. His master observed that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made everything he was doing successful. So Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal attendant. Potiphar appointed Joseph overseer of his household and put him in charge of everything he owned. From the time Potiphar appointed him over his household and over all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's household for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on everything that he had, both in his house and in his fields. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. He gave no thought to anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and good looking. Soon after these things, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused, saying to his master's wife, Look, my master does not give any thought to his household with me here, and everything that he owns he has put into my care. There is no one greater in this household than I am. He has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. So how could I do such a great evil and sin against God? Even though she continued to speak to Joseph day after day, he did not respond to her invitation to go to bed with her. One day he went into the house to do his work, when none of the household servants were there in the house. She grabbed him by his outer garment, saying, Come to bed with me. But he left his outer garment in her hand and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his outer garment in her hand and had run outside, she called for her household servants and said to them, See, my husband brought in a Hebrew man to us to humiliate us. He tried to go to bed with me, but I screamed loudly. When he heard me raise my voice and scream, he left his outer garment beside me and ran outside. So she laid his outer garment beside her until his master came home. This is what she said to him. That Hebrew slave you brought to us tried to humiliate me. But when I raised my voice and screamed, he left his outer garment and ran outside. When his master heard his wife say, This is the way your slave treated me, he became furious. Joseph's master took him and threw him into the prison the place where the king's prisoners were confined. So he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him kindness. He granted him favor in the sight of the prison warden. The warden put all the prisoners under Joseph's care. He was in charge of whatever they were doing. The warden did not concern himself with anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him, and whatever he was doing, the Lord was making successful. Genesis 40. After these things happened, the cupbearer to the king of Egypt and the royal baker offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was enraged with his two officials, the cupbearer and the baker. So he imprisoned them in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same facility where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard appointed Joseph to be their attendant, and he served them. They spent some time in custody. Both of them, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream the same night. Each man's dream had its own meaning. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were looking depressed.
So he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were with him in custody in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? They told him, We both had dreams, but there was no one to interpret them. Joseph responded, Don't interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph. In my dream there was a vine in front of me. On the vine there were three branches. As it budded, its blossoms opened, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes, squeezed them into his cup, and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. This is its meaning, Joseph said to him. The three branches represent three days. In three more days, Pharaoh will reinstate you and restore you to your office. You will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you did before when you were cupbearer. But remember me when it goes well for you, and show me kindness. Make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this prison. For I really was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and I have done nothing wrong here for which they should put me in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation of the first dream was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also appeared in my dream, and there were three baskets of white bread on my head. In the top basket there were baked goods of every kind for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them from the basket that was on my head. Joseph replied, This is its meaning. The three baskets represent three days. In three more days, Pharaoh will decapitate you and impale you on a pole. Then the birds will eat your flesh from you. On the third day, it was Pharaoh's birthday, so he gave a feast for all his servants. He lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker in the midst of his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his former position, so that he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But the chief baker he impaled, just as Joseph had predicted. But the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Mark 15 Early in the morning, after forming a plan, the chief priests with the elders and the experts in the law, and the whole Sanhedrin, tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, You say so. Then the chief priests began to accuse him repeatedly. So Pilate asked him again, Have you nothing to say? See how many charges they are bringing against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. During the feast, it was customary to release one prisoner to the people, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was imprisoned with rebels who had committed murder during an insurrection. Then the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to release a prisoner for them, as was his custom. So Pilate asked them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. So Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What has he done wrong? But they shouted more insistently, Crucify him! Because he wanted to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas for them. Then, after he had Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers led him into the palace, that is, the governor's residence, and called together the whole cohort. They put a purple cloak on him. After braiding a crown of thorns, they put it on him. They began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Then they knelt down and paid homage to him. 
When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The soldiers forced a passer-by to carry his cross, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country. He was the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which is translated Place of the Skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, throwing dice for them to decide what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by defamed him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, even the chief priests, together with the experts in the law, were mocking him among themselves. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also spoke abusively to him. Now, when it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Around three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last, and the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood in front of him, saw how he died, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they had followed him and given him support. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were there too. Now, when evening had already come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath. Joseph of Arimathea, a highly regarded member of the council, who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. He called the centurion and asked him if he had been dead for some time. When Pilate was informed by the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. After Joseph brought a linen cloth and took down the body, he wrapped it in the linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone across the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was placed. The next reading through the Bible, week 4, day 1, January 22nd. 2023. Genesis chapters 41 through 42. Mark chapter 16. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible. NETBible.com. Copyright 1996-2019. Used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC. All rights reserved.